a drug that reduces the patient's amount of pain is an analgesic. We can give analgesic drugs to treat the patient's pain. Analgesics are going to be symptomatic treatments. They are treating the symptom. Trouble is, we haven't got too many of them, really. Um, let me see what we can think of. Well, I can think of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They're analgesic. Opioids are going to be analgesic. Paracetamol is an analgesic. Inhaling nitrous oxide has analgesic properties. And lignocaine, given locally, is analgesic. They are the only main groups of analgesics I can think of at the moment. When we're giving analgesics, we need to go by the WHO, the World Health Organization Analgesic Ladder. Now this was introduced by the World Health Organization, particularly for cancer pain back in 1986. And the statistics show that if the WHO analgesic ladder is correctly used for cancer pain, then we can expect almost complete remission of pain in 70 to 90% of our patients. This means we only need a specialist palliative or pain control consultant occasionally. 70 to 90% of the time, hopefully we'll be able to deal with the pain as general nurses and doctors that work with these patients. Now, it's an analgesic ladder and it's only got three steps. The first step is that we give a non-opioid analgesic. This could be paracetamol, which is acetaminophen. In England we call it paracetamol. Or it could be a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. The first step is to give a non-opioid analgesic, a simple analgesic. And we can give this with or without adjuncts. Now an adjunct is something that you give with the analgesic. So for example, if a patient had a pain and anxiety, we could give them some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and we could give them some diazepam as well for their anxiety. The adjunct is what we give with the analgesia. So that's the first step on the analgesic ladder. That's the first thing to try. Non-opioid analgesia with or without an adjunct. As time goes by, or if that doesn't work, then we need to go on to step two of the WHO analgesic ladder. And step two means giving an opioid for mild to moderate pain. What you might call milder opioids, such as codeine or tramadol. And you can give these with or without a non-opioid analgesic. So what does this mean? Well, basically we can think of analgesics as being in three categories, paracetamol, non-steroidals and opioids. Now, if someone is getting an opioid, they can have an opioid with paracetamol. So you can give someone 30 milligrams of codeine and a gram of paracetamol as well. You can give both together. You might not want to give them more codeine based analgesic because that can make them sick and give them constipation. We certainly can't give more than a gram of paracetamol every six hours so we couldn't give two preparations containing paracetamol. But because they're in different groups we can give the opioid with the paracetamol and we get a double whammy effect. We get an enhanced analgesic effect. And in fact you can give an opioid with paracetamol and a non-steroidal at the same time. So it would be reasonable in a patient with moderate amounts of pain, you give them some codeine, 30 milligrams of codeine, give them a gram of paracetamol, and you give them 400 milligrams of ibuprofen as well. You can give the three together. But we wouldn't want to give a double dose of paracetamol, that can cause liver damage obviously. We wouldn't want to give a double dose of uh, 
opiate based and we wouldn't want to give a double dose of non-steroidal based either because side effects of the gastrointestinal tract etc. So that's the second step. Let's just go back. First step is non-opioid with or without adjunct. Second step of the analgesic ladder is an opioid for, opioid for mild to moderate pain with or without a non-opioid analgesia and again with or without adjuncts. We could give adjuncts as well. Now it's not quite this simple. Some recent research has shown that giving patients small doses of more powerful opioids can be as effective or more effective. So this is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good principle to work to. First is non-opioids, next is mild opioids. Now if that's not working, the third step of the analgesic ladder is an opioid for moderate to severe pain. Morphine, fentanyl, oxycodone, the classically strong opioid drugs. So for years and years we've been giving patients 10 milligrams of up to 10 milligrams of morphine or 5 milligrams of up to 5 milligrams of diamorphine. I remember when fentanyl first came out I was actually working in theatres with an, uh, anaesthetics when fentanyl first came out and we gave it intravenously but then later for palliative care uh, we, you have fentanyl patches now that are transdermal that go through the skin. So the third step on the analgesic ladder is one of the strong opioids with or without an adjunct with or without none opioid analgesics. So just because a patient's on morphine doesn't mean to say you can't give them paracetamol and diclofenac as well. You can because it's the three different groups of analgesia. So that's the WHO analgesic ladder, very straightforward. None opioids with or without adjuncts. Opio opioids for mild pain with or without adjuncts, with or without non opioids, then opioids for severe pain with or without adjuncts, with or without non opioids. But remember, this was brought in for palliative care in cancer patients. Now, in an acute trauma situation or a post operative situation, you would have to turn the ladder the other way around. These patients are probably going to need strong opiates first, strong opioid drugs first. So if someone first comes in with a broken bone after their accident, they're going to need probably up to 10 milligrams of morphine fairly quickly. And then a few days later, hopefully we can work down to the more moderate ones, eventually discharging them home on some paracetamol and diclofenac. So in the acute situation and in the post-operative situation, we might start with the third rung of the ladder first, then go down to the second, then go down to the first. <clears throat> Whereas in the cancer palliative care situation, we would start with the first rung, go to the second and uh, go to the third. And the other slight thing that confuses a bit is in the acute care situation now, we're giving quite a lot of intravenous paracetamol. And this is a very effective analgesic. Paracetamol given intravenously seems to be as effective as the strong opioids. So the WHO analgesic ladder is a remarkably useful guide to start your clinical thinking, but always titrating, always getting feedback from your patient, always monitoring the effectiveness, always making sure that you are trying to treat your patient's pain or prevent the patient's pain from developing. And in fact, that's a very important point in chronic pain and palliative care pain. We want to give the analgesics regularly because if we don't, the patient's pain is probably, it will, it will come back. And if the patient's pain comes back, we call that breakthrough pain. And it's harder to get rid of the pain than it is to prevent the pain in the first place. This is why drugs such as MST, slow release morphine sulfate, can be so effective in the palliative situation. So I think the last thing I'll say about treatment is we'll just talk about a few adjuncts. So what do we mean by adjuncts? Well, as we've said, an adjunct is something we will give with an analgesic. So we mentioned benzodiazepines. 
to calm the patient down to reduce their anxiety. So with an analgesic we might give some diazepam or some nitrazepam if they're having difficulty sleeping. We don't like using benzodiazepines for long periods of time but for a few days they can be a very effective treatment. Opioids can cause nausea so very often we'll give antiemetics with the opioid, metroclopramide for example. We'll give an antiemetic to anticipate the possibility that the patient could be nauseated and sick. Opioids of course can cause depressed respiration, they can act directly on the respiratory centres depressing respiration. So we need to observe patients respiratory status and oxygen status. But what's the other main side effect of opioids that you know of? That's right, it reduces gastrointestinal mobility and can cause constipation. And this can be serious. I have looked after quite a few patients, well one or two patients anyway, who've needed colectomies or partial colectomies as a result of perforation after severe um, codeine or opioid induced constipation. So monitor the patient's bowel status, bowel habits, give laxatives if they're required. If a patient's got colic, abdominal cramp, cramps for example, sometimes buscopan can be useful to help reduce the cramps as well. Now on that list of analgesics I had before, we talked about the non-steroidals, the paracetamol, the opiates, the nitrous oxide, the local anaesthetics, and we couldn't really think of any more analgesics, and I think I was probably right then. But there's other drugs that we do use for pain particularly chronic pain, particularly neuropathic pain. And it would be not unreasonable actually to call these drugs analgesics. So for neuropathic pain and chronic pain, very often it's worth trying tricyclics. We actually mentioned this when we looked at descending inhibition because tricyclics, the idea behind tricyclic antidepressants is they're going to increase the amount of serotonin and noradrenaline and the serotonin and the noradrenaline can be part of the activating neurotransmitters that activate the descending analgesic pathways. So giving tricyclics can be quite reasonable in chronic pain and neuropathic pain. Gabapentin is another one. Gabapentin is going to work on the GABA, one of the other neurotransmitters, the gamma amino butyric acid. And again, that can help to stimulate the analgesic pathways. Again, very effective in neuropathic pain, tricyclics or gabapentin. And the other one that we sometimes use is, is sodium valparate, which is an anti-epileptic, but can also be good for neuropathic and chronic pains. And I suppose we could include, include as adjuncts uh, corticosteroids, which can reduce inflammation and therefore reduce pain. An adjunct could be something as simple as a cup of tea as well, that the patient just has something that they take with their analgesic. Anything the patient takes with their analgesic, or we give them with their analgesic, we would classify as an adjunct.